Let's get straight to it. Top 10 fish for your five gallon aquarium. Number one, the honey gourami. It gets about this big or so. You can run as a solo fish, or maybe you can seek in a few guys down below. Um, not too aggressive, so you can mix with shrimp sometimes. Not all the time. Sometimes. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. What do you got? What do I got? Oh, I'd have to go with my number one would be the SBI Rasbora. That's mm. definitely one of my favorites for a five-gallon aquarium. They definitely kind of float around in the middle, although they don't school and move around very well. They kind of have independent thought. How many? How many? Yeah, for five gallon. Five gallon, I'd, I'd stay under ten. Is probably going to be the best for a five gallon. All right. Next up, I've got Endler's Live Bearer. I would pick a form that's kind of got a color to it. Maybe the Tiger Endler or the Chili. Well, not Chili Green. Well, there's a Chili Red, but there's a Lime Green. It looks super cool. If you put some red plants in there, the lime green against it looks super cool. And, you know, get a trio, like a male and two females. They'll spawn up a bunch, and you'll have to give them away to your friends. I have to admit, I am kind of pissed that you got the tiger handler, because yeah. that's one of my favorite fishes of we all time. We had to time. cross them off the list. We had to cross it off my list. Yeah. But don't worry. My number two fish would be clown killies for a five-gallon aquarium. Great desk. Uh, great desk aquarium fish you know they're going to be cruising around at the top of the tank which means you could probably have some other stuff in there like some shrimp uh, maybe a couple of little bottom dwellers and stuff like that but bear in mind these are jumping fish so you are going to need a lid on the a lid on the aquarium um, the one that i've seen in the past is the one with, that has the good finger hole in the top yep. of it uh so kind of let a little air exchange still happen uh at the top of the tank but want to stop them from jumping out it's part of their nature that's how they spawn Put in a nature piece of cotton right there keep them from Yoink. well i've never seen them actually make it out through the hole so that seems to seems to work out pretty well but also leaves a little bit of air exchange so that's good all right next up for me i've got dwarf frogs i know it's not a fish but they are super cool on a five gallon and i feel like it's a waste to make like a 180 gallon dwarf frog tank you know, so I like it would be a lot. Tank. Yeah, that would be a lot of a thing. The hardest part about them is the feeding. Don't feed like frog pellets and that kind of stuff. They just break down and become a mess in the aquarium. Use like frozen blood worms or uh, live black worms, something like that, like a whole food. They're real clumsy. They kind of just like throw stuff at their face to eat it. And that's kind of why you don't want to mix them with too many fish either is they eat really slow. The fish will eat up all the food. And because they're kind of a clumsy eater and they just throw stuff in their mouth you don't want anything too small in there like shrimp a lot of times they'll eat all the babies and that kind of stuff so yeah number three on my list would have to be rice fish uh very very durable fish very uh they're, they're pretty much down to acclimate to kind of the environment which is good for a little five gallon aquarium that's going to get warm it's going to get cold uh, just kind of the nature of the thing. Oftentimes, you know, I, I refer to a five gallon as a desk aquarium because that's almost always where I see them is like someone's desk uh, where they work in an office or something like that. And you're just kind of stuck in the sadness of a cubicle. Uh, something to add a little bit of nature into your day would be some rice fish in a five gallon aquarium and they can handle it. They can handle that situation and not be uh, that stressed out. Stocking wise, I'd probably only start with like you know, five or six, because they're probably going to breed. They're going to throw some babies and stuff like that. But you might be able to get everyone else in your office space all jazzed up when you're like, hey, who else is setting up a fish tank in this office? And I can give you some of these rice fish, right? They can also handle the temperature swing in an office. If they're turn on AC, then nothing at night. Mm -hmm. They can handle all those fluxes. So that makes a good fish. Yeah, yeah, it works out great. My next, number four, is the Brigitte Rasbora. Cute little rasbora gets about an inch or so. I'd start with seven or eight of them. The hardest part about them is, again, the feeding. That's a problem with a lot of the nano fish. Like, they only want to eat midwater. If it's floating on top, not so much. It sits on the bottom, not eating it. So you got to feed something that wants to float around. You can use something like golden pearls. You can use frozen cyclops, live baby brine, frozen baby brine, flake food if you've got some bottom dwellers and stuff. But once it gets past them, they're not going to eat it. So... They look super cool against Planet Tank, red color, but they are a pain to feed. Yeah. One of the tricks I had with those fish uh, back in the day was to make sure there's a good mossy area mm -hmm. in your in your scape. You know, throw some moss in there that uh, that is on something that's kind of at a diagonal, right? So if you do feed and it does sink down, mm. it at least gives them an opportunity to kind of swim by it and uh, kind of that's nip at it. That's a good tip. It. Yeah. Yeah. 
<clears throat> that helped out a lot with ours that we had. Um, we had a five gallon aquarium that was in the weirdest spot, but it, it worked out that way with the moss in there. My number four is going to be the uh, strawberry betas. As you guys know, I have a huge affinity for the wild caught betas. They're uh, definitely one of the more intriguing fish, and I, I definitely need to get back into handling more of them. And it's been on my mind, and it'll be coming up fairly soon. But uh, a trio of them would be fantastic. Um, uh, two males, one female, uh, is generally the way to go with the. Uh, with the wild betas, it's just kind of the best best route to go. Most people think it's the other way, um, but with most betas like that, you want to give the male some opportunity to you know handle the rearing. You know they're going to handle the rearing. Because they're and stuff the mouthbreakers. Like the males are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. The male the males are going to be carrying the eggs around and stuff. So it is best to have extra males and stuff. Um, and worst case scenario, if you uh, if you do have like this little office desk uh, aquarium and whatnot, uh, you can always move that the male beta into a Maybe a, maybe a, a gallon container. How dare you? Te temporarily dare while he's you? holding eggs. I mean, it's not the greatest thing in the world to do, but um, well, just while they're holding, if you have fine. to do it while they're holding, yeah. it's it's uh, it's something that could be accommodated. And they can ha handle the uh, the good te the temperature swings of of being in an office and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, my last one. I wanted to get a bottom dweller on there besides the uh, dwarf frogs, so I chose the rosy loaches because they can breed in a five gallon. They only get about inch and a half or so. You know, the males get all colored up. The females are kind of super drab brown and get bigger. But, you know, they, they look cool. And you can put them in with maybe those uh, chili rasboras or endlers. Something up top that's not taking up way too much space. But they can hang out. I would start with, like, four. You know, I wouldn't necessarily three, but, like, four or five. Like, a, a small yeah. number. They're really easy to sex. So you can know, like, oh, I'm going to get more girls and boys. But, you know, if you have three ones that are brown and kind of look like a log and one red one, mm -hmm. You know, it's maybe you go for two and two and try that out. Try that out. See what yeah. you get. See if you get some breeding and stuff going on. Yeah. Always, always definite. That's a positive, bro. For sure. As far as I know. Now, I have to admit, I hadn't been thinking about rosy loaches until you wrote that down over there. And mm -hmm. now I'm thinking, I'm thinking I might have to get some at some point in time. But They're my number fish. five is my all time, all time hardiest of hardy fishes. The White Cloud Mountain Minnow. Um, these are fish that could be in a giant aquarium. They can go all the way down to the five-gallon aquarium. They are robust. Um, they don't require a lot of special treatment. Um, just keep the water relatively clean. Uh, you can feed them straight up with... Uh, I've, I've raised them from uh, being spawned all the way up to full grown on nothing but dry food. Uh, I'm not saying it's the best thing to do in the world, but they're a super robust fish that just is going to rock and roll and keep surviving, um, which works great in a little five-gallon aquarium. Uh, good for beginners, too. Yeah, it's good for beginners. It's pretty much good for everybody around. Uh, the one thing that they that I, I didn't get on here is uh, schooling. Now, white cloud mountain minnows, like, they're kind of not the greatest schooling fish either but most things won't in a five gallon so that was, i wasn't really super concerned about that i was more concerned about the hardy side and white cloud mm -hmm. mountain minnows definitely come in and, and and meet that and they're really pretty yeah yeah so that's our top 10 for a five gallon if you guys enjoyed check out his channel corpus oskin check out my channel aquarium co-op the aquarium co-op co yeah dot com yeah <laughs> and we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching guys later